My name is Dr. Suzanne Reddington. I'm an assistant professor in the public health department at Arcadia University, and I'm here to talk to you today about the importance of following social distancing measures, even when you aren't in a high risk group. Social distancing is an established public health measure that helps to mitigate the spread of infectious disease. It does so by limiting or decreasing the amount of contact individuals have with one another. This is different from quarantine, where you separate individuals who are known to have been exposed to the virus from those who are not exposed, and isolation, where you keep symptomatic individuals away from everyone else. Social distancing measures are a necessary tool for new viruses like COVID-19 as a way to slow the spread of disease. When public health practitioners consider ways to break the chain of infection, that is to stop people from getting sick, they must first understand the disease itself. We want to know what causes it, where it lives in the environment, how it leaves one person and infects another, and what makes someone susceptible to infection. Then we identify the weakest links in that chain for which we have resources to help us break those links. For this coronavirus, being a new virus to humans, we do not have a vaccine, so we cannot make a host or a person less susceptible through that method. We also do not have an effective treatment, and thus we cannot treat the virus or the infectious agent. We do not know of any non-human reservoirs that the virus hides out in, such as water or animals. So we're left with addressing the portal of exit or how the virus leaves an infected person, mode of transmission, and portal of entry, or how the virus enters the body of a person. These methods can be addressed through measures such as healthcare workers using personal protective equipment, things such as masks, face shields, and gloves, basic hygiene practices such as hand washing, cleaning surfaces, and covering your mouth when you cough or sneeze, and through social distancing practices. Social distancing in particular enables us to decrease the contact individuals have with the virus, thereby limiting the mode of transmission and the portal of entry. On average, an individual infected with seasonal flu will infect 1.3 to 1.4 other people. If you track those 1.3 or 1.4 individuals to see who they would infect and so on down the line for 10 steps, that original person can result in 14 to 29 people becoming infected with the flu. On the other hand, the current data for coronavirus suggests that an individual infected with COVID-19 will on average transmit that virus to two to 2.5 other individuals. Now that doesn't sound like a big difference, but if you were to again follow that for 10 contact steps down the timeline, that original person can affect between 1,024 and 9,536 individuals. Now that's a big difference from 14 to 29 people. It's very important to remember that anyone who contracts COVID-19 is at risk for serious complications. Beyond the fact that anyone could end up with severe symptoms, everyone, including you, plays a significant role in slowing the transmission of this disease. By helping slow the spread of disease, you're not only taking actions to keep yourself safe, but you may also help protect someone else from being hospitalized further down the chain. You may have also heard of this referred to as flattening of the curve. As we slow the spread of infection, the healthcare system is better able to handle the severe cases it does see. If we don't participate in social distancing and thereby don't help slow the spread of COVID-19, the hospital system may be overwhelmed. So what does that mean for us? It means that if we contract the coronavirus and have severe symptoms, the hospital may not have enough equipment and personnel to provide us with the care that we need. It could also mean that if you experience another health condition that requires immediate attention, such as a broken leg, heart attack, severe cut, or asthma attack, 
that same overwhelmed hospital system may still not be able to provide you with the level of care that you are used to. So please, regardless of your risk level, follow social distancing measures for your health and the health of the community.